God and the problem of evil. How can we solve the problem of evil when God exists? Can a God be good when there is evil in the world? What can we conclude from all the theories that exist on the subject? The book Evil and the Cross answers that evil is an incomprehensible mystery, that it cannot be excused, that it should not be excused. If we look for a meaning to it, we justify it. We say that it is good, that evil is good. There is a triangle to show that there are three truths to be held together. God is good, God is almighty. How can we say that together God is good and almighty at the same time that there is evil? And this evil, if it is really evil like hell, we cannot say that it is good. The answers that exist that account for evil say that in the end evil is good. For example, hell. There must be a hell for man to be free and there is a hell. How can God be good and bear that hell? So let's go back to the Bible so as not to imagine answers that are not those that God reveals to us. It's true that we would like an explanation. It will seem easier to live with and yet God is beyond us infinitely. God is above us. If he's all-powerful, it's because he's more powerful than us. If he's infinitely good, it's because he's better than us. He has more courage to bear the evil that exists. The evil, as for us, goes out of our heads because it's not possible for it to stay there. It's like a phalloid ammonite. If we swallow it, we are poisoned. The simplest thing is either one, not to swallow it, or two, to vomit it. Evil, we'd rather not swallow it, but if we swallow it, we might as well not digest it, but give it back. Uh, you can't return evil for evil. What does the Bible tell us? God does not say that evil is good. In his gospel, Jesus did not say, blessed are those who suffer because God is great or whatever the reason may be. So I agree that for evils that are secondary, in fact, it is for a good that is superior to it. This I do not call evil finally an explanation. What good is it to us if we are explained something? It is better to hope to, to hope thanks to Christ who rose from the dead. Jesus took evil upon him and he did like a judo grip on evil. Death had its effect on Jesus and Jesus had its effect on death. He suppressed death by having lived it. A great God came prevent evil, but if he is greater than we are, we must we have to surrender ourselves to him into his hands, surrender our spirit and not want to know why he allows evil, but only hold fast to God's innocence. God has never done any evil. It is written in the gospel, which of you will convict him of sin? But we cannot say the same about us being guilty, and even if we did not kill our father, we are selfish, we are responsible for this evil, and therefore we have nothing to say to God, because it is not God who is responsible. If there was someone responsible to be found, it would be us and not God. Jesus, on the other hand, suffered the evil he didn't do, but he took it upon himself. We should rather ask him for forgiveness than them accountable. He never committed it. He endured it for us who commit it. So it's not for us to reproach God but rather to worship God who willingly and out of love took the evil upon himself. Evil doesn't mean that God is sadistic. No, there must be another solution than saying that God is good, he is innocent, he loves us, he's the one who has taken evil upon himself. That's his answer. Evil is unjust, he has done nothing to suffer that evil. Evil is a mystery, but there is another mystery, is that of God's love which we can't explain any more than the mystery of evil and that mystery is easier to accept.